The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com, or you may email Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim answers the question, what does the stock market see? And Jim, since the beginning of June, the stock market's rally has been broadening beyond tech and AI. Today, we'd like to start off by having you break down the stock market in 2023. Yeah, so if we go to the first chart, um, this is gonna be a little bit chart heavy, this one. These fancy charts are called waterfall charts and they break down the performance of the S&P 500. On the left, it goes from January 1st to May 31st. And on the right, it goes from May 31st to July 17th, which is the day before we were recording's close. And it shows the seven mega tech companies from Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta, and Tesla, and then the other 493. And it just shows you the contribution to the S&P's return. So through May 31st, the, those seven stocks pushed up the entire index 10%, 10.06%. And then the other 493, that's the red bar on the chart, were actually wound up pulling the index down 1.48% for a total return from January 1st, or a total return for all of these sectors from January 1st to May 31st of 8.58%. Now, if you look at the right-hand chart, that is from May 31st to July 17th, We've had a flip of that. The 4.8, the, the overall the market is up 8.02% since January, since June 1st. 4.85% or well more than half of that has come from the other 493. And yes, all the other tech stocks are up over that period, but now the, the overwhelming gains in the stock market have come from everything else, where in the first five months of the year, the overwhelming, only the seven stocks produced gains. The other uh, 493 produced a small loss. So if we jump to the second chart, just to kind of detail it, this same format, now this is the entire year through yesterday. And you can see that the stock market is up, or the S&P is up 17.3%. And all of those seven stocks positively contributed to it. And only 3.79% of that, so not even 25%, of the gain in the stock market for the entire year has been from the other 493 companies. Um, but as the first chart shows, there has definitely been a shift in the thinking in the last six weeks or so that the, that the broadening of the, of the rally. Why is there the broadening of the rally? There seems to be two narratives out there. One is what happened on June 1st, which is, this, which is that pivot date that we used, was the debt ceiling was agreed to, or the debt ceiling uh, deal was agreed to that pushed off the pushed it off to January 1st of 2025. Uh, and so the market re was relieved that there was a no liquidity crisis. And in the last six weeks or so, we've gotten a couple of inflation numbers. They have come down and they are now getting people to believe that we finally vanquished this elevated inflation. What are other markets doing? Right, so to lead on to that, if we jump to the next chart, if, if no liquidity crisis and we vanquished inflation, boy, those are big macro themes. They should not just show up in the other 493 versus the top seven. They should show up everywhere, that, that, that they're effect, affecting everything everywhere. But as we go through this next series of charts, it's not, it's not. So the first set chart we have here is rates in the curve. So the orange, um, the orange line is the two-year note, the green line is the 10-year note, and the blue line is the yield curve of the 10-year minus two-year yield curve. And that vertical line on the chart is May 31st, same date, that, this, that all of a sudden all of the other 493 took off and the market's been going higher. Interest rates are higher, both on the two-year note and on the 10-year note, and the yield curve is a lot flatter or 
in this case, more inverted. If you told the, you know, just any old bond person, okay, inflation is going to be vanquished and there's not gonna be a liquidity price, bonds will rally. Interest rates will go down, the yield curve will steepen. The opposite has happened here. Interest rates have gone up and the yield curve is flattened. So this whole idea that there's no inflation problem or that the liquidity problem is falling on deaf ears when it comes to the bond market, we're not seeing it. If we jump to the next chart, what about the rest of the world? Okay, so the blue line on this chart is uh, the uh, MSCI, the Morgan Stanley Capital Index's US stock index. So it's very similar to the S&P 500 and it starts at zero on January 1st and that rightmost vertical line is May 31st. So US stocks are continuing to power higher, okay? What about everything other than US stocks? They haven't done a whole lot of anything. If they've had any gain since May 31st, it's only come in the last three days, literally in the last three trading days. Because prior to that, the, they were meandering sideways as US stocks are powering higher. Lack of liquidity, vanquishing inflation, it should affect more than just US stocks. And we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that in the rest of the world. So we jump to the next chart. If there is at least one market that is turned around May 31st, it's the dollar. So on this chart, this is just a simple dollar index chart. And there's a label on May 31st. And you can see that the dollar has been falling since May 31st. And it's really been falling hard in the last week on the miss on inflation. Okay, so the dollar is turned lower. But lower dollar is supposed to mean more inflation. That's supposed to make exports more expensive so that uh, we, we, we ex you know, export or excuse me, imports to the U.S., exports to the U.S. or U.S. importing stuff from China will become more expensive if the dollar is weakening. Stuff that comes to us from Europe, it should be more expensive if the dollar is weakening. If we're talking about reduction of inflation, the dollar falling is the opposite of that. So if we go to the final chart in this sequence, which is commodity prices, again, I put a label on May 31st. Commodity prices, as the dollar's been falling, are up. This is, so, uh, you know, if you ask the regular market professional, what does it mean if the dollar's falling, commodity prices are going up? That, that's a inflationary. But we're talking about vanquishing inflation. So if you sum it all up with interest rates, world stocks, the dollar commodities, none of these markets are behaving under the narrative that is supposedly driving the stock market. Everything's getting better, no liquidity crisis, inflation has been van vanquished. If that was the case, it should affect all these other markets, and it's not. It only seems to be in the stock market. So if it's not happening, what does this mean? Yeah, so if we go to the next chart, um, this is the, let me explain the chart and I'll give the meaning for it. This is a weekly survey done by the American Association of Individual Investors. They survey people and they ask, are you bullish or bearish in the outlook of the stock market? Remember, this is, this is members of the AAII, individual investors. So the blue line shows the percentage of those responding is bearish. The orange line is the percentage of those responding is bullish. And bulls minus bears or net bulls is in the bottom panel. Well, you can see that if you look at the bottom panel, since January of 2022, you got all these red bars, meaning that there was more bears, the blue line higher than the orange line in the top panel, because the market was falling and everybody was all grumpy that the Fed was raising rates and inflation was going to 9%. But right around the first week of January, I'm sorry, first week of June, six weeks ago, it flipped and everybody, you could see that with the big jump in the orange line right at the end on the right side of the chart, all of a sudden, all these individual investors got really bullish just as the other 493 stocks took off. Now, before I give you any more comment, let me go to my last chart. I threw in just an oddball chart here. So the orange line is the, the CSI 300. This is, the 300. this is a stock index of Chinese stocks, Chinese stocks that trade in Shanghai. So this is the CSI 300. That is the orange line. The blue line is the NASDAQ Golden Dragon China Index. So a number of these Chinese stocks also have American depository receipts or ADRs that trade on the NASDAQ. There's an index of those. Since May 31st, Chinese stocks are up 16% that trade on the NASDAQ in the United States. Chinese stocks that trade in China haven't done anything. 
So it's almost like everybody said, if you're listed on a New York Stock Exchange, buy it. Doesn't matter if it's a Chinese stock or whatever it happens to be. If it's listed on a New York stock, if it's listed on a US exchange, individual investors are jumping in and they're buying all this stuff. And then they tell us, well, it has to do with no liquidity and lower inflation and the economy is getting better. Well, wait, that should affect lots of markets, but we're not seeing that in lots of markets. So we're left with this age old question that we've had for many, many cycles. The stock market does one thing, other markets like the bond market or maybe other markets do another thing. Which market is right on that? Which market narrative is to be believed? Well, that's kind of a subjective thing, admittedly, but usually when we look at it, we try to say, okay, what is the narrative there? Turns out that the weight of the evidence usually wins out the case. If the stock market moves in a certain direction with a narrative, and then you look and say, well, the bond market's doing the same thing, and it's consistent with the narrative, and the dollar and commodities and foreign stocks are all moving in the same way, consistent with that narrative, the weight of the evidence says that move is very real and will continue. But when you've got the old Sesame Street you know, game, one of these doesn't look like the others, and that tends to be the stock market, that's kind of a red flag. Now, that doesn't mean it's terminal. Look, these other markets could turn around, interest rates could start to plummet, commodities could go down, the dollar could strengthen, you know, and you, we could say, look, we, the stock market just led all this stuff by six or seven weeks, and eventually everything caught up. Now, that's possible, but more times than not, what usually happens is it becomes an unsustainable move. And that, to me, the red flag is, why are Chinese stocks rallying in the U.S. when they can't even rally in China? Um, and so it just, and you've got individual investors getting all excited about the stock market right now. So it really does suggest that this is a stock only move. It's not being confirmed by other world markets. And therefore it's, let's call it a yellow flag. I don't wanna say it's a red flag. And the reason I wanna say it's a yellow flag is maybe the rest of these markets continue to go. Otherwise you could, you're welcome to email me and say, no, the s and is gonna go to 5,000. Interest rates are gonna go up. You know, the dollar's gonna keep going down. It's gonna cost more to import everything. The stock market doesn't care. Everything's gonna work against it. and It's gonna keep going higher. Look, that's happened in the last several years and it could happen again. But uh, call me skeptical on that right now. I wanna see more confirmation from other markets about this move, especially this broadening out because right now it just looks like a bunch of FOMO, fear of missing out among individual investors running to buy anything that hasn't rallied um, to try and play catch up. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today. Thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks again and have a great day.